direct communication with ancient Middle Eastern deities seem to be a practice many secret societies are engaged in. In Cairo in 1904, the oculist Alistair Crowley claimed to his followers that he was contacted by an entity that was a messenger of Horus. Meanwhile in the US, some believe that an annual ritual event in Bohemian Avenue that has been taking place since the 1800s feature rituals is now for to the Canaanite deity Baal by the country's rich and powerful. Quod est superius, est secut quod inferius, et quod inferius est secut quod est superius, at preparanda miracula reunis. Did an occult order from the 1930s make contact with an ancient Egyptian deity that warned of an impeding supernatural threat to the modern world. The phrase, that which is above, is like to that which is below, and that which is below is like to that which is above. To accomplish the miracles of one thing is an example of the occult knowledge the Emerald Tablet is set to contain, and why it and the works associated with the Hermetic tradition have become so important in the 21st century. From alchemy, science, and magic, to the threat of the shape-shifting mutants, in this episode, we'll investigate the lore and origins of the Emerald Tablet, and why it's potentially one of the most important occult objects in history. إن الأعلى من الأسفل والأسفل من الأعلى عمل العجائب من واحد كما كانت الأشياء كلها من واحد بتدبير واحد In the most broadest terms, when anyone speaks of the Emerald Tablet, they're either referring to the writings of the Greek Hermes Trismegistus, written tens of thousands of years ago, or they're referring to a translation of words allegedly spoken by an entity claiming to be an ancient Egyptian deity called Thoth during the early 20th century. Although many people believe they're the same thing, these writings are two entirely different pieces of work, but are still very closely linked. Also known as Tabula Smaragdina in Latin, the original Emerald Tablet writings is an ancient occult text that's considered as a cornerstone of Hermeticism, an historic belief that derives its name from Hermes, and part of a greater collection of work known as Hermetica, a cornerstone in the development of alchemy, where a chemist can transmute one type of mineral to another. Writings from this tablet are evident throughout Greek, Latin, and Arabic language works dating back thousands of years. However, the precise origin of the original tablet that contained the text is shrouded in mystery. Within this, it's believed that there are three parts of wisdom of the universe, alchemy, astrology, and theology, which is a form of magic that typically involves the summoning of a supernatural entity or power. Hermetic works concerning alchemy are perhaps the most important, because in a roundabout way, it tenuously laid the groundwork for all modern science. Alchemy was an ancient philosophy practiced in India and China. It spread to the Islamic world in the 8th century, where alchemists made significant chemical discoveries, and in the 12th century, key Islamic texts were translated into Latin, fueling its study in Europe. While it's most commonly associated with turning base metals into gold, it's also been linked to magic and demonology, and even the development of alternative forms of energy. For example, in the previous episode, we introduced an anomaly called Red Mercury, and how the form of alchemy associated with it has potentially world-ending consequences. With everything from granting its users immortality and opening portals to the realm of the Jinn, to the development of atomic material. However, this is just 
one of many powerful chemical anomalies that straddle the line between magic and science. That's also considered as a potential ingredient for the Philosopher's Stone. Alchemists believe the Philosopher's Stone could transform common metals like lead into silver or gold, and even be the key to immortality. It's the key that makes the Emerald Tablet and its study of alchemy an important point of focus for many secret societies. Many of the major occult orders that were founded in the medieval and renaissance periods were hermetically influenced, and it's believed that those groups that are rumored to exist today have teachings that are still heavily influenced by hermetic writings. In what is known as the hermetic texts, Hermes Trismegistus outlines several teachings that are said to have been adopted by many powerful secret societies. These teachings revolve around the concept of as above, so below, or in al ala min al asfal, wal asfal min al ala. Amal al ajaib min wahid kama kanat al ashya' kullaha min wahid bitadbir wahid. In the full original Arabic, this is a reference to the supposed effects celestial mechanics may have upon the earth, such as the sun upon the change of seasons, or those of the moon upon the tides, as well as more historic and astrological influences involving living cosmic entities and travel between dimensions. A booklet was published titled The Emerald Tablet of Thoth, The Atlantean, by Dr. Maurice Duriel the founder of an occult group known as the Brotherhood of White Temple. In the booklet, there's a poem that features these lines. In the form of man, they amongst us, but only to sight were they as our men. Serpent headen, when the glamour was lifted, but appearing to man as men among men. So, we have two questions here. How does these words differ from that of Hermes? And secondly, who are these serpent-headed beings? Well, first, according to Duriel, the author of this poem is Thoth, an Atlantean priest king who is an ancient Egyptian deity, looking like an anomalous humanoid with the head of an ibis. He states that the writing date back to 36,000 years BC, and that his translation of them came via Thoth. This translation occurred through a form of divination or channeling. For those who do not know, channeling is when extra-dimensional beings use humans as a vessel to communicate with other humans. So it's arguably a form of gen possession. On a side point, direct communication with ancient Middle Eastern deities seem to be a practice many secret societies are engaged in. In Cairo, in 1904, Alistair Crowley claimed to his followers that he was contacted by an entity that was a messenger of Horus. Meanwhile in the US, some believe that an annual ritual event in Bohemian Avenue that has been taking place since the 1800s feature rituals as the Alfred to the Canaanite deity Baal by the country's rich and powerful. Secondly, Doriel states that he encountered two Atlanteans who transported him to a gigantic cavern somewhere below California in the United States. Here he mapped out the geography and cosmology of Earth's interior, including description of underground races based on the information these Atlanteans apparently gave to him. So again, here we have the concept of as above, so below. In his translation of Emerald Tablets, he describes one of these underground races as humanoid lizards that also live on the surface disguised as regular humans in position of influence. This lore that predates Duriel's writings has continued well into the 21st century, with some connecting them to the ancient Sumerian demons or aliens. They state that these anomalous humanoids take the form of politicians, celebrities, musicians and business leaders with the goal of secretly consuming our negative emotions and even our blood and controlling the destiny of humanity. And despite emerging from beneath the earth, modern alternative theorists say they actually first originated from the Draco constellation, with the ones that take human forms on earth being lizard-human hybrids. 
But how does this relate to the original emerald tablet Hermes had written? Well, according to experts, apart from thematic similarities concerning the occult, Duriel's writing bared little in common with any ancient hermetic work. They state that there are no real philosophical, alchemical, astrological, or even magical similarities in Duriel's work, and that his writing from Thoth are closer to science fiction, theosophy, and New Age beliefs than actual hermeticism. For example, similar concepts such as lizard people and the hollow earth idea appears through the work of H.P. Lovecraft, an early contemporary of Duriel, and numerous other mid and turn of the century sci-fi authors. However, regardless if there's any truth or not to Duriel's text, the one mystery that remains consistent beyond his writings is the identity of Hermes and his relationship to Thoth. Understanding this might be the key to understanding the origins of the original Emerald Tablet. So far in this episode, the character of Hermes has been associated with helping to establish the basic scientific principles of chemistry and safeguarding our world from extra-dimensional threats. So by any account, this would probably make him one of the most important individuals in history. He's also been identified as the Deity Pushan in Hinduism, and the Persian prophet Zoroaster, and even the pharaoh Akhnatun. But how come we still know next to little about him? The historian Jason Kulavitu believes that he's merely a composite character derived from many pre-flood myths. However, a more solid answer may be found in the destruction of the Library of Alexandria in Egypt and the birth of magic and alchemy in the Arab world. It's said that this library likely housed many of the work of Hermes Tresmegistus, including the Emerald Tablet, and it's from here it made its way deep into the Middle East. Built in 306 BCE as one of those flagship projects of the Ptolemaic Kingdom, scholars from all over the Mediterranean were commissioned to acquire texts for the library. It's been theorized that as many as half a million papyrus scrolls were accumulated here, covering everything from literature and the arts to the vast range of scientific knowledge of that time. It's speculated that if it was not for the destruction of the Library of Alexandria, mankind may have made up major breakthroughs in science and technology hundreds if not thousands of years earlier. It's believed that during the time of its fall, Arab looters had preserved books from it, including those on magic and science, and the Emerald Tablet itself. In studying these writings, some medieval Islamic scholars identified Herms as the Prophet Idris السلام. Here, Arab biographers state that this Prophet was named three times because he had three origins, hence his Greek name Tresmegestus. The first Hermes comparable to Thoth, he foretold the Great Flood during the time of the Prophet Noah and it's believed that he carved the principle of a sacred science into Egyptian hieroglyphs. The second Hermes in Babylon was the initiator of Pythagoras. The third Hermes was the first teacher of alchemy. According to these scholars, after the prophet Idris ascended to heaven, the ancient Egyptians renamed him Thoth, turning him into an Egyptian god with an ibis head. Within Christianity and Judaism, Prophet Idris goes by the name of Enoch, with some medieval and Renaissance Christian writers also identifying him as Hermes. This is where we can find stronger clues to his identity and his relationship to both the development of magic and science and the theological threat of demons. Zosimus of Panopolis, a 3rd century Christian Greco-Egyptian alchemist, states that there are hermetic texts that provide a direct connection between Hermes and the Watchers, angels who were dispatched to Earth to watch over the humans but ended up desiring them. Continuing with this theory, George Sinaclus, a Byzantine scholar from the 7th century, referred to these beings as not angels but a tribe of evil jinn, and it's from them a book called Chami was written, and from that book, 
the science of Chemia was created. Chemia is another name for alchemy, taking us back full circle to the Emerald Tablet. For us, Sinaclus observation can be interpreted as suggesting that science, and by extension technology, is a form of magic, but its occult nature is only relevant when our practice of it comes before a significant understanding of it. Magical texts like the Chami is an example of this occult science, because it came from Jin, at least according to Sinaclus. And this theoretically may be where Hermes derived his knowledge for the Emerald Tablet as well. So, what do you think? Was Hermes as important as we make him out to be? And could the alternative work written by Maurice be true, especially its description of extra-dimensional lizards? Comment down below, like, and let's discuss. And inshallah, see you in the next one.